Fallen Kingdom was one of the most iconic animations in the history of Minecraft. Massing over 200 million views over the course of five videos, it has captivated the minds of new and old fans alike. The series has spawned thousands of stream clips, fan art, spin-offs, and shitposts, based around its original content. But something that hasn't been widely shown online is a comprehensive discussion about the lore of the series. Seeing as it's been over a decade at this point, I'd say it's about time someone gave it a try. In the beginning, God created the heavens and whoa, earth. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, the order of the series is as follows. We've got Rising Kingdom first, followed by Fallen Kingdom, then by Take Back the Night, then Find the Pieces, and finally by Dragon Hearted. Our story starts off with the Rising Kingdom video. At this time, most of the villages shown throughout the series are still in their infancy, starting off with small settlements. The Kingdom in the Fallen Kingdom video, which I will now refer to as Valley Kingdom, was located at the center of a large mountain range. These natural defenses ensured the early citizens would be protected from mobs, and could make good progress on expanding without fear for their safety. There's uncertainty around why the settlement was here, especially with the end portal. But what is certain is that it was a prime piece of land that caused the citizens there to rapidly expand over the relatively short period of time. During this time, there were also remnants of much older structures such as the Desert Village Ruins, the End Portal, and of course, Herobrine's Mansion. This is where the king makes his first chronological appearance in the story. Possibly not even a king yet, he is seen fighting swarms of powerful enemies and traversing the dangers of Herobrine's mansion. His mansion is home to many dangerous creatures, but many treasures as well. Key of which is the Mob Staff, a scepter which grants the holder the ability to control powerful monsters. At the end of Rising Kingdom, he is able to steal the Mob Staff and take it back to a small village. While this greatly angered Herobrine, he was able to use the Mob Staff to greatly expand his village from a tiny little town to a great and powerful kingdom. As the video comes to a close, we can see the silhouette of what looks to be Herobrine, staring off in the distance at the mountains of Valley Kingdom and leaving us on a cliffhanger. That is until we get to the next in the series, at least canonically, Fallen Kingdom. And it shows the Valley Kingdom at the peak of its power. It's bustling with activity, you got happy people, the youth, they frolic and play, and peace reigns across the kingdom. But the peace ended one night when Herobrine appeared. Herobrine had snuck into the castle and had planned to release captured mobs using TNT. The mobs quickly overran the kingdom, defeating the army and decimating the population. The king did fight for a few moments, but inevitably retreated back to the castle to a hidden chamber with the end portal. He would then take an eye out of the end portal frame. Then the king meets back with his family, but they were caught in a creeper explosion and divided. The king had to flee to the roof, but he had nowhere left to go. So he jumped. But he lived anyway. <laughs> Turns out he planned this and he landed in a well with the Eye of Ender. We also cut to Hero Ryan. He's very pissed off that the eye is gone. And right after this, we don't know much about the whereabouts of the king or Hero Brian. Hero Brian wants access to the end, but the king has the eye to open the portal. Yet none of them are present in the fallen kingdom. So from this, we can just assume that they left, which leaves a perfect opening for the events in. Take Back the Night, which is my personal favorite. Um, that doesn't matter though. So we first open to a group of villagers inside the broken castle. We can assume this happens somewhat recently since there's still blocks on fire and- Also, we see the crown on the armor stand in a similar fashion to how it was in Fallen Kingdom. Which proves the beginning of Take Back the Night takes place before the sorrowful segments in Fallen Kingdom. Okay, bye. In the rubble of the castle, the villagers find the prince and take him back to the desert village to care for him. The responsibility for his care is placed on an older looking villager who remedies his injuries. As the prince grows, he helps out around the village and is taught how to fight by the elder villager in these old ruins. During one of these fights, the prince actually trips and he falls into this cave where on a wall is etched a prophecy of both past and future events. The prince continues training until one day he finally beats the elder in a battle. They return to the desert village and see it being under siege by a pigman horde. The elder dies at the hand of a piglin brute with the scroll in his hand. This scroll happens to hold the location of Herobrine's castle, which is where the prince heads to after the elder's funeral. Atop his horse, he battles zombies, some weirdly placed lava giant, I don't know why it's there, and finally arrives at Herobrine's castle. After entering, he's attacked by Herobrine in this, uh, this fuck, this scene is amazing, man. I don't, I'll let it play.
The desert village has begun to rebuild itself. Soon into the rebuilding process, the prince begins having flashbacks of the fall of his old home and his last moments with his family. This creates a drive in the prince to find the ruins of his old home and find answers, or possibly peace. With the help of his villager companions who rescued him years ago, he learns that he must travel by boat to reach his goal, the Fallen Kingdom. After this, the video transitions and introduces us to the series' main antagonist, the Nether Kingdom. In order to understand this, we must first take a step back to the beginning of the series. Some time before the main events, the three kingdoms of the Nether united under the Pigmen Emperor. The kingdom seemed to comprise of Pigmen, Wither Skeletons, and one other faction, but the identity of the third kingdom is still unknown. Once united, the Pigmen army began building up their forces, as well as sending small raiding and scouting parties all throughout the overworld. Notably among these was a failed attack on the ruins of Valley Kingdom, and the attack on the Desert Village, which resulted in the Teacher Villager's death. The Pigmen in charge of these missions were the Pigmen Brute, who was slain in Take Back the Night, and the Pigmen Captain, a skilled warrior and strategist of the Pigmen Army. With the help of the Emperor and a scientist, the Pigmen Captain sends soldiers to spawn the Wither in the middle of Coastal Town to both cause destruction and to eventually harvest the Nether Star upon its defeat. Seeing the Wither's explosion, the Prince diverts off of his original course to battle the Wither and save Coastal Town. While dodging constant explosions, he's able to jump off of a roof and latch onto the Wither's back. Unfortunately, the Wither was able to get him off by bashing into the side of a building, injuring the Prince in the process. Battered and stunned, the Prince makes one final gamble as the Wither closes in for the killing blow. The Prince ignites a nearby pile of TNT right before the Wither is able to blast him, killing it. But before he has a chance to process what just happened, an enormous portal emerges from the ocean, bringing forth a large nether ship carrying a battalion of pigmen. The pigmen are then able to snatch away the nether star and immediately fire at him with their cannon. Still fatigued, the prince is just narrowly able to escape death, being knocked unconscious and buried in the rubble from the barrage of cannon fire. When he awakens from the rubble, he sets back off on his original journey. He soon arrives at the entrance to the ruins of Valley Kingdom. Soon after he docks, he hears someone behind him. Startled, he turns around expecting to fight, only to reveal a familiar looking old man looking down at him. This is very, very last minute, but we forgot to mention where the king is in those sorrowful segments in uh, Fallen Kingdom. Personally, I think it takes place either during the time of Find the Pieces or maybe a little before. That's really all I can say about that. At the end of the video, we switch back to the Nether. The Pigman Captain shows the Emperor the Nether Star, in which the Emperor responds with a mischievous nod. The Captain flies atop a gas, taking the star to a large mech, using the star as a fuel source. The camera pans upward as the pilot is revealed, the half-cut piglin brute that the prince had slain during the desert village attack, with eyes now glowing a bright white similar to Herobrine. The prince finally did it. He found the fallen kingdom and his lost father. Yeah. During a stroll where they reminisce about their past life, the king points out a nether portal on the nearby mountain. Like the desert village, it appears that the Fallen Kingdom also got raided by a group of nether pigmen, not knowing that the kingdom had already been destroyed. Seeing as how a few moments later we find ourselves in the castle's prison with the pigmen, it's safe to say that the king successfully defeated them. The prison itself contains a hidden room behind a portrait, and as we later see, there is an ender chest in this room. But before we have a chance to see what's inside of it, we quickly cut to the nether army, preparing to invade the overworld. Slowly and slowly, portals appear throughout the overworld. Flamethrower brutes appear and torch the jungle villages. Ghast riders appear and they bombard the snow village and the coastal city. But from this chaos, we find ourselves back in the portal room, with the king taking out the eye of ender he took so long ago and activating the end portal. From this, both the king and the prince jump inside the end portal, preparing to fight with the ender dragon and the enderman. Despite the battle only starting like two seconds ago, they already start to lose, and as things get more and more desperate, the king grabs his trump card. He slices open the ender chest and reveals the mob staff. Yeah. The king takes control of the ender dragon, and then we cut to the coastal town. We see the piglin mech rush to the offensive against coastal town. At the same time, the king and the prince appear with the ender dragon. In Coastal Town, the prince drops to the ground to combat the enemy pigmen while the king and the dragon battle the mech. In his fight, the prince comes across the piglin captain, and they fight in this really well done battle sequence. In the background of this same battle, we see the ender dragon release a colossal blast against the mech, knocking it down. The prince, after killing the piglin general, takes advantage of the situation, traveling up the mech to finish off the pilot. 
The pilot escapes from his coma and in a panic launches the mech's failsafe, a Nether Star missile. The prince unknowingly stepped on top of the missile as it launched away. The prince takes one last look at his people and his father as he uses his sword to guide the rocket through the nether portal, crashing it directly into the castle floor where the Pigman Emperor was located. And here we are. The Fallen Kingdom has begun its own rebuilding process. Humans and villagers unite to reconstruct the once great kingdom. But then we look into the distance, and we see the king, mourning for his lost family. A bittersweet ending to the Fallen Kingdom series. That's it for the video. Thank you for watching, everybody. And remember, leave a like if you liked it, and of course, dislike it if it sucked. And if a timeline wasn't enough for you and you want a little bit more spicy stuff, some more opinionated sort of things, you want a lore and discussion video, we got one. Eventually. Maybe. Theoretically. Like and subscribe to find out. And big thanks to PiggyBrine111. We've been working on this video for technically over a year, and we put most of our love and passion into it these past two months, so couldn't have done it without Okay. Bye!